Yes, you're in the right place. This is FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. I'm your host, Lisa Kearney, holding it down right here inside the Meadowlands, the FanDuel Sportsbook. It is so nice to be back here in Jersey, getting you ready for week three of this awesome NFL season. And you know how we roll. We're making game picks for every single season game on this slate, bringing you some upset specials on the money line, and of course dropping DFS advice as well. Now, it's you, it's me, and of course, it's our baller team as well. So let's get our guys in here in our Los Angeles studio. I miss you guys. Betting expert Dave Weaver alongside former NFL wide receiver and Super Bowl champion James Jones. And as always, joining us from Pittsburgh, Sports Talk radio host Andrew Filipponi, and of course the face of Marquee Sports Network, Cole Wright, coming in hot from Chicago. Guys, so much to get to here. So let's do this. Yes, we are ready. But before we get to our experts info, got to make sure you're prepped to place your bets. Now is the time to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app so you can make your bets right from your phone using, of course, our experts advice. And as a special thank you, FanDuel is giving new customers up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. Yes, new users can take advantage of the no sweat first bet. How? Well, just place a cash bet with the FanDuel Sportsbook. If you don't win, you're going to automatically get your stake back in free bets. It is that easy. And thanks for hanging with us here on More Ways to Win. Because we're going to kick this thing off with a huge AFC East matchup in Miami. Bills at Dolphins. Thank you, football gods. Both teams are undefeated and both offenses rank in the top five in total yards, passing yards, and total points. Here are the Bills coming off that blowout win against Tennessee on Monday night while the Dolphins erased a 21-point fourth quarter lead to beat the Ravens. Guys, the AFC is already off the rails. James, uh, let's get you get right to your wheelhouse here. Been there, done that, yeah. because yes, in your nine years in the league, you've seen it all. I want to <laughs> take you back to week 15 of the 2013 mm. season. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. You're with the Packers. <laughs> Green Bay came back yeah. 23 down. Ooh. You guys beat the Cowboys five touchdowns in that second half, uh, including a James Jones <laughs> touchdown, uh, by the way. So what's the team's mindset during that type of rally, James? And then how do you guys carry that into the next week? You're right, Lisa. Been there, done that. I think the main thing is you got to find that one play, right? You get that one play, you look up at the scoreboard, you're like, okay, we make one more, we're going to be in this game. And then you just start getting that confidence. You start saying, okay, defense get a stop, we get one more, score one more time, and you start getting that confidence. And that, when you start getting that confidence, you're like, we are about to win this ball game, climb our way back in this ball game and win this ball game. And you could tell that's kind of what happened to Miami. They made one big play, defense came on the field, got a stop, so they looking at each other like, ooh, one more play and then that, uh, that other big play came and they're like okay we got a game right now and you start getting confidence off each other and then you look at that at the scoreboard into that game winning that game and the locker room I'm telling you the best scene that you cannot see is the locker room when you, everybody's running in there hugging high five and coaches yelling everybody screaming one of the best feelings in the world Yes, James, one step at a time, gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to get your pick for this one in just a sec, James. But first, let's get to our betting experts here. Dave and Pony, this one is for you. Dolphins getting six and a half at home. Dave, you're up first. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem here now for the Dolphins is they're playing Josh Allen, the Buffalo <laughs> Bills. Pony, let me tell you how many times Josh Allen has beaten the Dolphins in a row. Let me count it for you. One, uh. two, three, four, five. Hold on, I need my other hand. Uh. Six, seven. Seven uh. straight wins. The last three by 15, by 35, by 30. As a better look, I, I'm not a, the type of guy that's picking the Bills every week. I'm going to pick my spots on them, but this is one of the ones I had circled because of the fact that they own the Miami Dolphins. And look, they got off to a little bit of a slow start last year, did the Bills, losing to the Steelers week one. They're dialed in already here, coming into week three. I, I don't see how they can stop Josh Allen in this offense. I'm going to lay the points. Uh, the odds makers either don't know what they're doing or they're super smart on FanDuel because the line makes no sense based on how the Bills play. They've won 20 games in a row by double digits. 
20. So the line should be nine and a half or 10 because if the Bills are going to win, it's not going to be a close game. But I think Miami is the play in this game. And I think they're the play on the money line. I like them to win this game outright. Buffalo's got major injuries in their secondary, huge injuries. And that's not good when you're going up against Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill. So give me Miami to get to a surprising 3-0. Yeah, it's a money line moneymaker. Spoiler, by the way. Yeah, James is ready. James, who you got? I ain't saying you tripping, but you tripping. Are we the only ones watching Buffalo? Buffalo look like the best team in football right now. They look like they cannot be beat. They got it clicking on defense. They got it clicking on offense. This is one of those teams that can win ugly, win pretty, win any type style they want to win. I have Buffalo winning this ball game. And, I, hey, you said seven? Seven in a row for him? It's about to be eight Eight, wins in a row for Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills against the Miami Dolphins. I like Buffalo in this one. All right, there you go. Let's get on to uh, Baltimore at New England, y'all. That's going to be a great game, and so is this one. Patriots 1-1 one and one after that win in Pittsburgh. But New England averaging just 12 points per game. It's third fewest in the league. And this week, they're up against a Ravens defense that has given up the most yards in the league so far. Most of those, of course, came last week when they lost that 21-point lead in the fourth quarter, fourth quarter against Miami. But you have to imagine that they are hungry, James. Unfortunately, you've been there, done that as well i'm bringing you back to week three of the 2013 (laughs) season may not be a great memory but we're going there packers gave up 16 (laughs) points in that second half to lose at cincinnati walk us through that feeling as you see that lead evaporate and how do the ravens now bounce back here this week so we started off the show well huh lisa and you're gonna bring (laughs) that up huh no that's not that's not a good feeling that's not a good (laughs) that's not the the end of the stick you want to be on where you're just you feel the lead slipping away you feel yourself blowing the lead and then when you're blowing the lead you just automatically feel like nothing goes right right you feel you see the other team making plays and you're like all right we've been making plays all game long right and then you find yourself like man now we can't we can't make the play we making the little mistakes they're not making the little mistakes and you feel them the momentum changing you feel them climbing back in the game and you look up at the scoreboard and it's a one score game and you're on the sideline it's not your ball and you just see them driving down the field ready to score and you don't want to be in that locker room after that one Lisa right there because that's a sad locker room after blowing the lead like that in the National Football League as hard as it is to win already and you blowing big leads not a good feeling at all you know you want to get right back out there. Great perspective, James. Uh, you're picking just a second. This time, I want to get Dave and Cole's take here. Ravens, two and a half point road favorites. Dave, you're up first again. What's you got? Yeah, you know, that's the key is what do you do with that anger the next week? And, you know, James, the player, he's dealt with it from that side. I'm a better. All I know how to do is research it from my side. So what I did was I looked at all the teams that had a 21-point lead Mm. at the end of the third quarter and lost. And it's only happened five times since 1987. All five of those teams that blew the lead came back and covered the next week. So I think that this team is going to come out with a fire. They're going to come out hot. They got two very speedy weapons. Uh, Looked up this on uh, Next Gen Stats. The two fastest ball carriers last week, Bateman and Duvernay, over 21 miles an hour ground speed. So Lamar's got weapons. Mac Jones is, come on. Yeah. He's not. I mean, two touchdowns and three turnovers, two picks and a a fumble. So I I think the Ravens are going to be way too much, and I think they're going to continue that trend of teams that blow the big lead, come back and get it done. Well, Dave, you don't want to waste the the Ravens in a a foot race. There's no doubt about that. And let's hope we get the Ravens that we saw in week one as opposed to week two because versus the Jets, well, Wink Martindale's defense, they allowed just one touchdown, and that was in garbage time. And last week in the fourth quarter, they were outscored by the Dolphins, four touchdowns to a field goal. Now, that can happen. Now, as you look at it, Baltimore, their defense currently third ranked overall despite what went down. They had a misstep, but they're not the Steelers because uh, that New England win, we know that was predicated all on defense, but they're still bottom half in the league, and they're going to show you why on Sunday, Lamar. I think he's going to carve them up at least 75 yards on the ground. Ravens, they win this by a 10 spot, 27-17. Yeah, this is no longer Tom Brady's Patriots, guys. Uh, James, who do you like in this one, and by how many points? You know, it's one thing that that you don't want to face, and that's a 
mad Ravens team and a mad <laughs> Lamar Jackson's team knowing that you just gave up a lead in the second half to go to 2-0. They are going to come out ready to go. And you got to believe they're going to come out ready to go because Coach Harbaugh always has his team ready to go, right? And Lamar Jackson, he knows, hey, this is every time I step on the field is big money time. They are going to come out on fire. They are going to play well. This Patriots team is in big, 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 big trouble. I think the Ravens are just way too much. I like the Ravens in this one, Lisa. I think I hear a blowout coming from you. All right, James, thank you. Ready to kick off the next one in Indy. The 2-0 Chiefs on the road at the 0-1-1 Colts. Flat out, Patrick Mahomes is hot. Tied for the league lead with seven touchdowns, but is the only quarterback with uh, uh, only one of those quarterbacks without an interception on the season. And when you look at the Colts, like what, what's going on? Indy still favored to win the AFC South, even after a week one tie in Houston and a shutout loss in Jacksonville last week. You guys, I'm trying to figure that one all out. James, maybe you can help me with that. You've been there, done that. 2014, a tough year for the Raiders, included the shutout loss to the Rams in week 13. I'm going back to back on you with these memories, man. How does a team rebound from that kind of offensive performance and get right back on the track they need to be? Ooh, Lisa, that's tough. You're bringing up bad, bad memories. But no, <laughs> the main thing you have to do, right, when you're losing games and you're not playing as well as you are playing, the main thing you have to do is you have to be honest with yourself when you turn the tape on. As they step into these meeting rooms and you turn this tape on, do not lie to yourself. If it looks stinky, it is stinky. If it looks 50-50, it looks 50-50, right? So I know there's some good, we know there's some bad, but you have to be honest with yourself and you have to attack that bad and get that stuff corrected because if you get that stuff corrected, we know that Matt Ryan, Matty Ice is capable of playing at a high level. We know you have one of the best backs in the game, one of the best O-lines in the game. You have really good weapons on the outside. Believe what you see on tape. Correct those corrections, right? Be honest with yourself and then you just got to come out and deliver and it only takes one game to get on track to start believing that we are the team that we thought we were going to be before this season and I think this is one of them games that they kind of get their mojo back yeah here we are in week three feel that jolt have that honesty early and you have time to fix it up here uh, thanks James pick in a second but Cole and Pony you guys are up Cole to get five and a half point home dog here Cole who do you like well, Lisa, I'll tell you what, as you know, Kansas City, they've been throwing hot grits on everybody all season long so far. Currently on pace to score over 600 points this season. And at last look, Patrick Mahomes, well, is still the best quarterback in all the league. Uh, get a load of this. Uh, 13 career September wins and only a pair of losses. That's convincing. Now, on the other side, Isaiah Pacheco, he's still third on the depth chart. But, you know, I did predict him to be the uh, offensive rookie of the year. And even though he's still... Third, yeah, expect more than two carries on the day. Plus, McCall Hardman looking for that first 100-plus yard receiving game since last January versus Denver and KC. Their defense, they're going to eat, not because they're good, because the Colts up front, plain and simply struggling. Chiefs, they win big in this one, 34-20 game. Yeah, I expected the Colts to get off to a slow start because Matt Ryan had been in Atlanta for 15 years. This is an old dog, new trick situation, but I think they rebound. I think the Colts, this line here is way inflated. There's no respect for Indy. Uh, you've got Matt Ryan with better receivers in this game because Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman missed last week. It is the highest paid offensive line in the NFL against the Chiefs team that's 28th in pressure rate. So they don't really get after the quarterback. And honestly, you guys are saying Mahomes is playing great. The stats say it. I watched the Thursday night game. I thought he could have thrown four or five interceptions. I was really not Ooh. impressed by him. So I'm going to take the Colts here, and I think they can win the game outright. Okay, okay. Well, Oddsmaker's oh, also on. believing. Yes, James. <laughs> James, yes, weigh in on that. Uh, who wins and by how many points? He's right. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, right, on the stat sheets, right, them picks don't show up, man, because, you know, it's the reason why DBs play DB, because, you know, hey, they try a receiver, they can't catch, right? And the ones that can't catch got gold jackets, they in the Hall of Fame. But Patty Mahomes did not play a super clean game. It was about four or five of those throws that could have been picks. I mean, the one out of Asante Samuel Jr. dropped in the end zone could have been 99, just like the Chiefs had against Justin Herbert. 
Chiefs fans, stay out of my, my, my Twitter. Quit hitting me on Twitter and all that, you know, saying I hate the Chiefs and all that. But I'm picking against y'all again. I'm picking against y'all again. I think Matty Ice and these Colts, they're desperate. They are going to run this football well. Matty Ice is going to throw the football well. I think they climb out of this 0-2. Oh, well, 0-1 start, tie, they tie uh, week one. I think they climb out of this and they find themselves to be a really good football team in the Kansas City Chiefs. I like the Colts and Jonathan Taylor and Matty Ice in this one getting their first W of the season. It's fine. You guys can woulda, coulda, shoulda all you want. But guess what? When you look at Patrick Mahomes' stat line, guess what it says under interceptions? Zero. Okay, here we go. It's week three. We're just getting started here on More Ways to Win. More expert picks and fights. It's coming hot. Inside player info coming your way. We're picking money line money makers. Yep, the teams that are plus money and primed to win outright. And before you set your daily fantasy lineup, you're going to want to hear what players are the best value starts for this week. That's next. Stay with us. Thanks for hanging with us as we break down week three here on FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. And this is the part of the show where we really lean in on the dogs and bring the hearty trash talk to the party. Yes, we turn it up. Let's go. It's time for Betmoji's Moneyline Moneymaker style. Guys, uh, Cole, you're on the hot seat first here. I want you to give me an upset special, an underdog that you think is going to win outright here in week three. Uh, now, here's the fun part. After your pick, the rest of the guys are going to grade your pick using an emoji because all the cool kids are doing it. So, Cole, yep. give us your upset pick. The guys are going to react. Well, I feel good about the grades because, Lisa, as you know, I <laughs> live on the hot seat. I want to issue an apology to all the fine people of Detroit, Michigan, because last week I doubted, but this week my eyes are wide open. Dan Campbell's squad clearly running the ball with some serious authority. DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, and uh, oh, by the way, just the third-ranked run game in the league to go along with the fourth-ranked offense. Jared Goff feeling pretty good right now, and as crazy as it sounds, Detroit, and they could be a serious problem. Just outside the top 10 defensively, and the Lions, well, they're looking for a repeat of the last meeting in this one. A two-point win early last December. I haven't winning by two once again. 23 to 20. Book that one, guys. Cole, hey, Cole, come on, James. Every now and then, you are my dog, man. You know what I'm saying? You listen, you smart okay. up here, man. Hey, them mm -hmm. Detroit Lions. Hey, I I'm jumping on it too. Energy and confidence is contagious, yeah. man. And you see it happening over there. They got it going right now. Them Vikes in trouble. James knows. No. So uh -oh. let me get this straight, James. Let me ask you something, James. <laughs> So the Vikings can blow out your Packers at home, but right. they can't beat the Lions at home? Division. You see the Vikings last week, right? Division. Each week is a different week. All right, don't different bring my week. Packers into this. All right, that's over. <laughs> they won last week. Don't bring my Packers into this. Cousins <laughs> never wins on Monday night. Though, Division so games go e e anyway, you know. And the Lions got it going right now, man. They playing well. I abs they absolutely could beat the Minnesota Vikings, and they ain't gonna beat the Packers next uh, next time they play neither. All right, you can take Cole's advice or make your own picks right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. New customers, don't forget, you get up to $1,000 at at back in bets if you don't win your very first wager. So take advantage of that. New users, get in on this. Be sure to take advantage of the no sweat first bet now by placing cash bet on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Again, if you don't win, we've got your back. You're going to automatically get your stake back in free bets. It is that easy, and you can do it right now. And of course, we're multifaceted in operation over here. So in addition to sports betting, you can get in on the fun with daily fantasy. We've got a bunch of DFS contest live right now where you can win thousands of dollars on FanDuel.com. The key to success, of course, is easy. Just get value at each position. And we've got a guy, Jim Sonis, the senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. He's got his best value plays here for week three. Hello, Jim. 
Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, as we'll discuss later on today, I want to spend up a running back for this week, which means we got to find value elsewhere. And to me, that does start a tight end with Zach Ertz at $5,200. Ertz has a tremendous workload for this salary. Even if you include week one, when Ertz is limited due to an injury, he still has 19% of the Cardinals overall targets so far this year with 36% of the Reds. And he's in a tremendous game for this week with a lot of scoring and a good tight spread. I like Ertz a lot, but I also do like Tyler Higby on the opposing side of that game. A wide receiver, I want to go to Garrett Wilson. He is a rookie at $6,100, and I expect the Jets to scale back their passing attack here eventually. But even just the true rate stats for Wilson are very good so far. 23% of the Jets' overall targets, 30% of the deep targets, and 42% inside the red zone. Facing off with the Bengals here, decently high total. There is enough here to go back to Wilson once again this week. My top value for this week, though, is another rookie, Drake London, $6,200, facing off with the Seahawks. London also, great workload so far with 33% of the team's overall targets, along with 45% of the deep targets for this Falcons offense. They've outperformed expectations thus far, facing a a non-frightening Seattle defense. London once again on the menu for cash games, especially for this week. So hopefully those guys give us the salary flexibility to spend up at running back and potentially for a wide receiver this week. Okay, thank you, Jim. Set your lineups at FanDuel.com right now. Of course, follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Sonis and check out his Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcast. And Jim is going to be back with us a little later in the show to reveal his Week 3 DFS studs. You don't want to miss that. Well, coming up here on tap, we got Brady and we got Rodgers. Yep, it's an all-time great matchup on the schedule this week, and it could be the last time these two take the field against each other, guys. Our experts and our ex-player debate uh, which team will come out on top for this one and preview, of course, the rest of the week's matchups. Plus, I'm asking our guys for their best bet of the week. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is FanDuel TV, and we're betting football. So let's get to it. It's week three. We're pitting our experts versus our ex-player to see which one is bringing the knowledge. You ready? I'm ready. Each of our betting experts will debate a game with James Jones, nine-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champ. James, we need to have you bring the ring on the show. That's, I think, our next. That's the week four. Uh, maybe you guys are going to agree. Maybe it's going to get heated up in here. There's only one way to find out. we got to roll them all in here. Guys, we're starting our expert versus ex-player battle with a showdown of all-time greats here, the 1-1 one one Packers versus the 2-0 and o Bucks. We've got Rodgers. We've got Brady. This is their fifth meeting. Tommy is 3-1 and one against Aaron. Uh, Bucks are giving one and a half points at home. Dave, who do you like? Yeah, you would have thought these guys would have uh, played a little bit more, but, you know, when he was on the Patriots only once every four years, yeah, he, he actually yeah. came in in a game that Favre started back in yeah. 2006 and played a little bit, but that one's not going to count because it's only a starting record. So Brady's had his number. Yeah. Um, but the receivers are a little bit of a question here, but I still think he's going to have somebody step up. Scotty Miller, Ooh. Perriman, Gage. I know it's not going to be Mike Evans, mm. but I think Brady, he just wants to always mm. win in this matchup. By the way, do you know your record against Brady? What am I, 1-1? One 0-2. One? Oh I'm 0-2 against Brady? But Raiders, you that, lost. That has to be false. Um, and then Matty <laughs> Flynn threw you a six, six yard touchdown yeah. and you lost by four. Yeah, we was beat up but that year too. You were 14 point underdogs in both those games, yeah. so you're a winner in my heart. There we go. The gamblers, you got it done. There for we them. go. But, but I'm gonna, taking the Bucks. Yeah, you're going to stand right across from me and take Tom Brady in the Bucks. Huh? Yeah. That, that, that's all good. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> Listen, he just said all those receivers that's going to be out, right? Mike Evans is suspended. Julio Jones, knee, right? You don't have your slot receiver in Chris Godwin, right? Who are you going to throw the ball to, right? Scotty Miller's okay, but I'm not a big believer in Scotty Miller. So you're going to have to rely on that run, right? Get the ball out of time. Brady Hand rely on that run. But the Packers run game, what the Packers did with their run game last week against the Bears, both them studs, A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones on the football field at the same time. You get, you get your receiver back. This offense is starting to click. You got the baddest man on the planet in AR-12, Aaron Rodgers. He is going to deliver. He is going to shrink that, that gap right there. This will be his second win against Tom Brady. I like the Packers in this one, and I like the Packers making a statement, getting a big-time win against Tom throwing Brady. To? He's got no receivers. We got Alan Lazar back, Sammy Watkins starting to get clicking, all that good stuff, run game going. We passing it to Aaron Jones, passing it to A.J. Dillon. How long is the show? I can keep on. 
on going. I got the Packers in this one right here against TB12. <laughs> I love it. One and a half point spread. It is going to be a great game. Cole, you're our expert for the next one. I would have focused on the Sunday night game for this one. Another good one ahead of us. 49ers at Broncos. Of course, Jimmy G now starting for San Francisco and the 49ers are a one and a half point road favorite. Cole, which side do you like in this one? Well, Lisa, we won't see James' ring if he keeps making picks like that because he'll have to pawn it. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, when it comes to the San Francisco squad, they're a completely different team when they do have Jimmy Garoppolo under center. No disrespect to Trey Lance, but uh, Jimmy G, uh, like oil that the machine needs right now. And uh, the numbers, there on his side. Three or four in the last meetings. San Francisco, and they've gotten him from Denver. So Debo Samuel, he's going to see an uptick in production. You know, uh, that's a no-doubter. But when it comes to that 49ers defense, uh, they have to step up to really cool the kitchen for the man they call Russ Wilson. Now, uh, they kept Geno Smith from going over 200 yards, and they held Seattle just 36-yard rushing. So Broncos, they're going to continue to spin those tires. 49ers, they're looking good here. 24-17, James. I don't like this. I, I really don't like this right now, man, you know, because this don't never really happen, man. Why are you agreeing? Why, why, why are we on the same page right now, Cole? I don't like it, yeah, yeah. man. Come on, you know, man. But, yeah, hey. You have to like it. You got to love it. <laughs> Jimmy G back in the building. I'm watching these highlights of Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel going to get the ball. It's possible that they could have they all pro tight end back and George Kittle this week out there. I am not liking what I'm seeing from Russ early in this season in this Broncos offense. I thought this Broncos Broncos offense will be high powered, will start off faster than this, especially against the opponents that they played. And Russ just don't got it cooking right now at yeah. a high level. And I don't see that happen against a solid 49ers defense, man. I like Debo Samuel. I like Jimmy G. I like Coach Shanahan in this one. I got the Niners winning this ball game, and I think they're going to win this ball game in a dominant fashion with a quarterback back under center in Jimmy G. Yeah, Russ spent too much money on roll right, bars and buying Netflix. his own jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling up in his own jersey. <laughs> oh, such haters. Uh, okay, okay, that's fair, though. That is actually very fair. Uh, Pony, you're tapping in for Cole for our next game here in NFC East Showdown. Monday Night Football, we got the 1-1 one one Cowboys, the 2-0 and o Giants. Pony, Giants one-point home favorites. How you play it? Ooh. They shouldn't be. Uh, they are because <laughs> Dak Prescott, Cuts out and Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush still not getting the respect he deserves as a two and zero starting quarterback. If Dak starts, I think the line's probably a five or six point spread in Dallas's direction. Uh, I trust Cooper Rush right now. I think the Giants, frankly, are a fraud. They're a cute story, but they've won ugly. Their wide receivers, Galladay, is livid, and Kadarius Tony's only touched the ball twice. So I think Dallas goes in on a Monday night and beats the Giants. You know what? I I, I agree. I am a believer more in Cooper Rush than I am in Daniel Jones. And I know the Giants is 2-0, but I'm a believer in Cooper Rush. But another thing I'm a believer in is this Cowboys defense. And defense goes with you everywhere, right? It wakes up with you out of the bed when you got home games. It travels with you on the plane when you got road games. And this defense for the Dallas Cowboys, starting off with Micah Parsons, is big time. They are going to make it hard on Daniel Jones. I think they will run the ball well. Cooper Rush is going to take care of the football. And he's going to make the throws when he has to make the throws. I like the Cowboys in this one. And when the Cowboys do win this game, Start putting some respect on Coach Mike's name because right when this thing starts to go downhill and he loses back-to-back -back games and they not doing well, it's all Coach Mike's fault. But once they start doing well, even when he don't got his superstar quarterback and they start winning games, Coach Mike gets none of this credit. Start putting some respect on Coach Mike's name, man. He's a heck of a football coach. Cowboys win this one. Just one pat on the back. I mean, come on, just one. Uh, this line, by the way, moved from two and a half to one uh, recently. So uh, look for more line movement there as well. Right now, a very tight line sitting at one. All right, we've broken down the games. Now you get to use that information for you because you can win thousands of dollars just by predicting what will happen in the Cowboys-Giants Monday night game. How? Jack in the Box has teamed up with FanDuel for the Jack Pack Pick'em Contest. It is free to enter, and here's how it works. Jack will make some predictions about the game. All you have to do is ride with or fade his 10 picks. Simple, right? Then just sit back and enjoy the Monday Night Matchup. See how many predictions you get right. 
The fans that get the most predictions correct will win a share of a ten of a fifteen thousand dollar prize pool. Now to enter, just go to the website on your screen and then ride with or fade Jack's picks for the Monday night game. And hey, if you don't win this week, it's all good. You can enter again before next week's Monday night matchup. Good luck and enjoy the Monday night game ahead of us. And now it is time to get our betting experts best bets of the week and have them put some virtual money behind it. These are so much fun. It's our weekly confidence competition. Here's how it works. Dave and Pony, each of you get 100 virtual dollars to bet your favorite spread, total, and money line. Before we hear your picks here for week three, though, we're going to take a look at the big winner from last week because you know how I feel about accountability time. Guys, Pony going two for three, including the Jets winning outright. Barely skated by on that one, by the way. But hey, a win is a win. You won almost 70 bucks on your bets. The floor is yours, man. Yeah, the Titans Bills picked out a very good one, but we'll move on. Uh, look, I like Seattle uh, on my spread bet. 40 bucks on them to beat Atlanta. The Falcons are good at losing close games. And the line's only one and a half. So I think Seattle off the emotional letdown of going to San Francisco following the Russell Wilson homecoming game. 30 buck money line play on a team with its back against the wall at home. That's Tennessee against a Raiders team that struggles at the line of scrimmage. And here comes Derrick Henry. So give me the uh, give me Tennessee as an outright winner. And then lastly, the under in San Francisco, Denver. I can't bet these teams to score points right now with the dysfunction that we see with the Denver Broncos offense and Russell Wilson. So 30 bucks on this game to be a low scoring one, Dave. Dave. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I'll talk about my total in a bit, but I'm going to start with the Rams. The Rams have covered seven straight times in Arizona. Look, it's pretty evident that, you know, DeAndre Hopkins needs to come back for this offense to start clicking. So I'm going to wait a few more weeks until I start playing the Cardinals. I think the Rams get the slam dunk uh, cover in that one. So $60 on the Rams, minus the three and a half. My upset, I'm going to go with the Colts. The last time and the only time the Patrick Mahomes went to Indianapolis, he was a 10 and a half point favorite and lost the game. They're not as big of a favorite here. I think they'll lose the game to the Colts. So $20 at plus 235. And then the over, I think Baltimore might get this on their own, about scoring 45 points. Of course, uh, the Patriots will probably contribute a little bit. So $20 on the over there. Yeah, Patriots struggling to put some score put some points on the board. Uh, all right, guys, there are some interesting strategies there. We will see which one is the best after this weekend. And of course, we'll air the results on next week's show. Hang tight for that and hang tight for the rest of this show. Let's keep it rolling and give our local markets a little love. You know who you are. Should you tail or fade your hometown guys? We're going to answer that next. Plus, James Jones was one of the few people saying the Cowboys would win out, right? And you heard it right here. He's given us his two Moneyline moneymakers ahead. Stay with us. Welcome back to More Ways to Win on FanDuel TV. We're so happy you're here with us. We're shouting out some of our betting markets, rapid fire predictions. Giddy up. Let's go, guys. Get you in here. You know the drill. I give you the line. You give me your pick in 15 seconds or less. Dave, let's start in the NFC East. 2-0 Philly at 1-1 one one Washington. Eagles looking good this year. They're giving six and a half. Yeah, they're looking good, but that's too many points to lay for the team that just played on Monday night. Their last 15 times, they've only had six days rest versus the full week. They're 3-12 and 12 against the spread. I think they come up short. I'll take Washington. Okay, Cole, the 0-1-1 oh, one one Texans head to your hometown of Chicago, taking on those 1-1 one one Bears. Chicago, two-and-a-half point favorites. Well, when it comes to Chicago Bears and uh, their all-around game, we know it's all about strong defense and a run game, and they have a top 10 D as well as rushing offense. That's the two hallmarks that the Bears are looking to hang their hats on. And the Texans, what well, we know they're pretty much bad in every single facet of the game, all three of them. So I see the Bears winning in this one, 21-17, uh, Lisa. All right, Pony, NFC North Division game here. We got Detroit at Minnesota. Both teams one and one Vikings giving five and a half. Yeah, massive overreaction to what happened to the Vikings last week. They beat the Packers by 16 at home. They'll find a way to beat Detroit by double digits, too. All right, Dave, back to you. Bengals are at the Jets. The AFC champs are 0-2, while New York now 1-1. Cincy, a 5.5-point road favorite. 
I'll use this line for the third consecutive week now. Who are the Cincinnati Bengals to be favored by five and a half <laughs> points against anybody that don't deserve to be? I think Brees Hall, keep an eye on this rookie running back for the Jets. He averaged seven yards a carry last week. The Cowboys got it done on the ground uh, last week against this Bengals defense. I think the Jets can run on them and cover. All right, guys, come with me here from Quick Fix to Upset Alerts. We are back on the money line and dropping those money line at Moneymakers for you right now. And we're giving them the bet moji treatment. You're welcome, America. So last week in this very segment, James told us the Cowboys would win outright against the Bengals. Dallas was plus 270. It hit, James. No pressure. Fist bumps. All the things. I'd give you a hug if I was there. Uh, time now for your first upset pick and uh, get ready for the guys to love or hate it. Who do you like in week three here? I am going to Patty Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, right? I like the Colts in this game. I like Matty Ice and Jonathan Taylor in this game. And it's something about being desperate. The Kansas City Chiefs 2-0, feeling good, riding high, beat two good football teams, right? Now you come up against a desperate football team that's preparing at a high level that might have a couple little trick plays in there to try to get some of these explosive plays, especially at home. I think Matty Ice and and the Colts find a way to get their first win against Patty Mahomes and these Kansas City Chiefs. I like the Colts in the upset. Yes. I already bet it. Really? I'm down. That really? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Cole. That's for you, Lisa. Your timeline. Cole, your screen. I can't even your see Twitter your screen, Twitter timeline, James. <laughs> <laughs> JJ, you're about to get blown up. Yeah. All right. Uh, James, let's on, let's forget that one and move on to number two. What you got? Let's. Number two. Hey, Cole, it's all right. You'll, you'll agree with me on one of these, all right? <laughs> number two, the Detroit Lions. I can't say it enough, man. Coach Campbell, I am a fan. Mm -hmm. I am on board, right? Your team plays extremely hard for you. But even when they didn't play extremely hard, they find ways to compete with the Minnesota Vikings. Close football games, right? Doesn't matter where it's played at. In, in Minnesota, in Detroit, these games are close, right? I like the Lions in this ball game. They are playing really good football, consistent football. They know how to run the football. They know how to get the football to their playmakers. Kirk Cousins coming off that bad performance Monday night. I think he struggled again against a division opponent in the Detroit Lions. I like these Lions in this one to go out there and get these Minnesota Vikings and get after Kirk Cousins again and win this ball game. Yeah, James. No, it, James. James' head's in the right place because, James, what did, what did uh, Uncle Prime tell us one time? You look good, you feel good, you feel good, you play good, you play good. They pay good in Detroit. They're looking to get paid in this one. There we go. There we go. I can't. I can't see your screen either, man. I, I can't see. James that. must have forgotten about a guy named Justin Jefferson for this game. Yeah, that must have, have slipped his mind. yards. No, I, I never forget about him. You know, what I mean, he ain't show up on Monday night, but I will never forget about Justin Jefferson. No, watch these lions, though, Lisa. We're gonna come back on this show, and you're gonna say James did it again. <laughs> I'm telling you what, if I had a pat, I'd give you two thumbs up. Like, I don't, no, kids don't even do that anymore. You got to have an emoji. But uh, great stuff by you, James. We'll see if it hits. Uh, play more games to bet. We're hitting them all here on More Ways to Win. Ka can Kyler Murray continue carrying the Cardinals and the defending Super Bowl champs hit the road for the first time this season? We're talking about everything. More game picks coming up next. Welcome back to more Ways to Win, everybody. I'm Lisa Kearney, and I am here at the Fatal Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. You guys know how much I love this place. We're in season five of this show, and this is our jam. And this is your personal invitation to join us here and enjoy two levels of bars, food, service, dozens of massive screens playing all the games so you can bet and watch your favorite teams and players right here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. So if you're in the Tri-State area, grab your friends and family and come out here for an awesome time on Sunday 
or any day of the week. We're inviting you here to the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. And we are moving on here on More Ways to Win as well. We tell you, we preview all the games on the schedule. We mean it. So we're going to crush the rest of this schedule and get you your wager winners to wrap up week three. Let's get right to it, guys. This is going to be hot and fast. One and one in New Orleans traveling to 0 and 2 Carolina. Saints quarterback Jameis Winston threw three picks in last week's loss to Tampa Bay. The Panthers have lost both games by a combined five points. Pony Saints, three point road favorites. Which side are you on? I'm all over Carolina. New Orleans has allowed 10 sacks. Those Jameis turnovers, uh, their offense right now, only 10 first half points in two games. I like Carolina. All right, let's get to the Raiders and the Titans with each team looking for their first win of the season. Guys, the Raiders gave up a 20-point second-half lead to lose in overtime to the Cardinals. <laughs> Titans got blown out by the Bills on Monday Night Football. So that's what we're looking at, Dave. The Titans, a one-and-a-half-point home dog. Yeah, the, the Titans are one of only three teams who defensively have given up two touchdowns already of 40 or more yards in the air. They give a 65-yard touchdown to Danny Dimes. So what's Derek Carr <laughs> going to do here? We need James Jones, number one ranked receiver, not to have two catches and 12 <laughs> yards. So, Devontae, oh, let's no. go. I'll take the Raiders. <laughs> you still got it. You still got it. All right, the Jags are at the Chargers. Both teams one and one here. Jacksonville coming off that shutout win against Indy while the Chargers lost in KC by those three points. James, Justin Herbert day to day with that rib injury, but still Chargers giving seven in the biggest spread of the week. Still seven. Yes. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not a believer in Duval. I like these Chargers. Herbert will be out there. He's had a long rest. He's played on Thursday night football. He's had a long rest. He will be out there. But this defense, the first two weeks of the season, this defense has been playing lights out. I like this defense again against those uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm taking the Chargers in this one. Okay, let's get to the Rams and Cardinals playing. Important division game here. All division games are important. Both of these teams are one and one. Rams held on, needing a late pick to beat Atlanta. The Cardinals erased a 20-point deficit to beat the Raiders. Cole, the Rams, three-and-a-half-point road favorites. Well, I'll tell you what, Lisa, the Rams, their defense, eh, so far 19th overall, and they're really having trouble finding the run game. Maybe Sean McVay has just been too busy shooting some of those spicy chicken noodle soup commercials over there, man, because uh, that's what he has going for him right now. But Kyler Murray, he's going to continue to spread things around. Uh, nine Cardinals caught passes last week. Uh, well, it was a win, and we know how everything went down. Uh, Raiders fans, sorry about that. But Arizona, they win this one 28 to 20. Ooh. All right, 0 to Atlanta. Ooh, okay. Let's get to 0 to Atlanta, traveling to the Pack Northwest to take on the 1 1 Seahawks. Both teams are struggling on offense, averaging less than 200 passing yards per game. James Seattle, one point home dog. You know, this is crazy because I'm trying to figure out, man, who do I believe in more? Is it Geno? Is it Marcus Mariota? Who is it? I'm taking the Falcons in this one. I'm taking Marcus Mariota. I think he has shown that he can do this job. He can be a top quarterback in the National Football League. He's played well these first two weeks. They started off a little slow last week. But Marcus has it going. I'm taking these Falcons to finally get their first dub of the season. I like the Falcons in this one. All right, great stuff by you guys. Game previews, check, done. Next, we're focusing on futures. We're bringing the future to you. A couple of division winner favorites have had slow starts. The guys tell you whether to bet a long shot and just cash in. We're going to keep it saucy after the break. You're in the right place. More Ways to Win continues after this. So, yes, 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 I know we're just a few games into the season, but some division favorites are off to slow starts. Yes, I'm looking at you, Green Bay and Indianapolis. Yes, there's still a lot of season left, but is now the time to bet on a big underdog that could take that top spot and win the dang thing? So we're going to get into that right now. We're going to break it down, starting with the NFC North. Guys, the Packers are still favored, but is there someone else that maybe gives you more confidence in this division and with that value? Give me your pick, Dave. You're up first. I mean, it's a two-horse race. Obviously, it's not the Bears or the Lions. For me, it's the Vikings. They already have that tiebreaker. If they can beat the Packers again and have beat them twice, I think that goes a long way. They'll have to do it in Lambeau, but they already owned them in week one. Give me Minnesota. 
right here next to me, Dave, again. <laughs> right here next to me. We own this division. This is the Packers division, all right? Used to. This is not the year you're going to knock us off, right? You have well, to come get the champion. The last three times, that's three times in a row we've won this division, and it's about to be four. Best quarterback in the division. We win it again. I can't believe this guy right uh -huh. next to and, me. Yeah. And I'm, say, and I'm saying to put that Packers bet in now because if they beat Tampa Bay on Sunday, they're not going to be plus money anymore. They're going to be an even bigger favorite. Yeah. So if you want value on Green Bay, you got to lock it in this second. Yeah, and James bringing up good points. They have won the last three division titles, and they've also won seven out of the last ten. And uh, we know numbers, they usually speak volume. So I have to side with Green Bay as much as that hurts my Chicago. <laughs> put a smile on your face, man. Green Bay. <laughs> I won't do it. <laughs> R-E-L-A-X, guys. Relax. All right, let's do the same thing with the AFC South here. The Colts have lost one, tied one, no wins, still favored to win the division. So let's get into this side. Dave, how are we feeling about Indy? I think that tie actually could end up being a pretty big thing in the end, having it not be a loss. Look, Tennessee's slow, and they're not impressing me right now. I think the Colts bounce back strong and get the, get the title. Welcome back, man. Yeah, we, we back. are, we are buddies. <laughs> I, I'm with him. I'm with him. Hey, I got Matty Ice and the Colts winning this division. I, I, I like them. I think they get a big win this weekend to, to kind of get this thing going, get it started. I like Frank Reich and the Colts to win this division. Best value by far is Jacksonville, and I think they're going to go to L.A. and beat the Chargers. And they're going to be one of the big stories of the NFL after week three. At that point, after they beat L.A., they will be the favorites to win the division. Ooh, big talk. Well, Frank Reich telling everybody and uh, not to overreact, but uh, I think that overreaction may already be set in because I like that uh, plus 200 with those Tennessee Titans. Uh, just got to go with Tennessee. You watch right, Tennessee? All right, great stuff there. In addition to casting in... <laughs> On the FanDuel Sportsbook app, you can also have some fun and make some easy money playing a new free game on the FanDuel Casino app. Check this out. Reward Machine is a daily free-to-play game that gives players the chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every single day. All you have to do is log in daily, spin for a free chance at rewards. Yes, it's that easy. So make sure to play Reward Machine for a free chance at everyday wins only on FanDuel Casino. That's that's it for us. Happy week three, everybody. We out. Keep it right here. Up in Adams with Kay and special guests next.